नमस्कार वेलकम टू सरिया की आई एम ए फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर लेट्स कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑफ एनसीआरटी साइंस सीरीज यू ऑलरेडी नो वी आर डिस्कसिंग साइंस टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ क्लास नाइन एंड वी हैव रीच चैप्टर टेन इन अ प्रीवियस इंटरेक्शन वी डिस्कस चैप्टर नाइन फोर्स एंड लॉस ऑफ मोशन वी सेट फोर्स इज नथिंग बट अ पुश और अ पुल वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट बैलेंस फोर्सेस एंड अनबैलेंस फोर्सेस एंड वी आल्सो डिस्कस्ड अबाउट आइजेक न्यूटन्स लॉस ऑफ मोशन टुडे विल मूव ऑन एंड डिस्कस चैप्टर टेन ग्रेविटेशन एंड हियर आल्सो आइजेक न्यूटन इज गोइंग टू फॉलो अस बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट न्यूटोनियन लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन द यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ gravitation we'll talk about gravitation law and we'll also discuss some other topics connected to it right let's begin our interaction but before that there is a small notice for all of you for all the upsc civil services aspirant study iq has brought prelims to interview initiative the most comprehensive program for upsc civil services preparation where we will be hand holding you throughout your upsc journey from prelims to mains to interview the most comprehensive and integrated program at a very affordable price the program has started from june 19 but you still have opportunity to get yourself admitted because the admissions are closing by 30th june do it as soon as possible i'll see you in the class right let's discuss today's agenda is to discuss about gravitation all right in our previous discussions we spoke about motion what is motion what is force different laws of motion today we'll talk about gravitation and we see that on earth we have earth force of gravity why am i standing still here why i am connected with the land if i take this pen and if i simply leave it the pen is going to fall down it is going to fall down and it is going to come to rest as soon as it lands on the land or soil why does that happen it happens because of a force called as gravitational force one fine day Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree. It said, "It said it's a story where an apple fell on his head." Then he started thinking, "Why did it fall downward?" And then he came up with the idea of gravity, the gravitational force. Now, gravitational force is always a centripetal force. That means which acts towards the center. A simple, a simple exercise can be conducted because. Uh, Isaac Newton started to think that apple fell down on earth but there is sun why is the sun not falling on earth there is moon why is the moon not falling into earth what is happening so he theorized laws of gravitation a simple exercise can be conducted as i told take a string and attach a stone to it and simply rotate it in a uniform circular motion you will see that this string will always be in tension that means some sort of force is acting continuously and as soon as the tension in the string it goes down or it goes to a lower level the stone is going to fall down it is not going to follow the circular path right now why is this happening the gravitational force is a centripetal force which always acts towards the center that means if this is mother earth the gravitational force always acts towards the center of that particular body this was established by newton now there is another force which is a counter force to the centripetal force it is called a centrifugal force centrifugal force means a force which acts away from the center of this circular motion remember centrifugal force is a pseudo force it's actually not a force per se but it is a pseudo force to balance the centripetal force in a in a uniformly revolving motion centripetal force always acts towards the center centripetal acceleration is provided and in a circular path if you take the direction of that particular object say for example this football it continuously changes its direction if it is in this if it is at this instant the direction is this side if it is here the direction would be this side if it is here the direction that means the direction of motion is continuously changing but the force that is acting everywhere it is acting towards the center centripetal force the opposite of centripetal force is centrifugal force which acts away from the center in fact the centripetal force it is a real force which we have seen 
during the gravitational interaction or it is also seen during the electromagnetic interaction. So, centripetal force is a real force whereas centrifugal force is a pseudo force to balance the centripetal force. This is a pseudo force. Please remember this point. Very important. All right. Now, based on this knowledge, what we can establish is imagine this is earth, right? The moon is revolving around the earth. Sun is, sorry, earth is revolving around the sun. And if there is no gravity, if there is no centripetal force which is acting, then in absence of such a force, what is going to happen? If I take the example of this stone, it is wherever, wherever the centripetal force now becomes zero, the stone is going to move in that particular direction. Imagine if there is no centripetal force acting between moon and earth, then the, then the moon would be getting out of the orbit in a straight line, right? Now, this force is holding everything together. That is how we can explain the motion of moon around the earth. This is due to centripetal force. There is some sort of centripetal force which is continuously holding moon together in a uniform motion. And once this force is gone, now this centripetal force is basically the balance between gravitational pull of earth and gravitational pull of moon. So, net force is acting towards this. And if centripetal force is absent, Imagine centripetal, centripetal force is zero, then the moon would, would be thrown out of the orbit in a straight line. But because of this centripetal force, which is called as gravitational force, moon is revolving in a uniform circular orbit around earth. Same concept applies for earth around the sun. And that is how Newton came with the universal law of gravitation. He was just thinking that because of the gravity between sun and earth, earth is right now balanced in its orbit around the sun. Same applies for earth and moon. Moon is now in the orbit of earth. Then he thought, if apple is falling on my head, that means some sort of force is acting on this apple and that force is bringing it towards earth. Meaning, earth and this apple are interacting. And Newton asked the question, if earth is pulling that apple towards it, is the apple also interacting with earth? And he said, yes. He came to a conclusion that every body in this universe, it attracts another body with a force called as gravitational force. Right? So, gravitation, universal law of gravitation, it states that every object in universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the distance between them. That means the closer they are, the more is the force of interaction or force of attraction. This is the universal law of gravitation. Now, if you are thinking that if, if I am here and if there is another person standing here, am I attracting that person with the gravitation force? Yes, according to universal law of gravitation, every object it attracts every other object with the gravitational force and that force it depends on the mass so gravitational force it depends on mass one that is if body a is attracting body b then it depends on mass of body one and body two and the distance between them this is the gravitation force so if you have to calculate you will see the gravitational force of attraction or gravitational force between sun and earth this would be mass of sun mass of earth divided by distance squared of the distance between earth and sun so you will find with how much gravitational force the sun is attracting the earth you will get that value and this g is basically a constant so what newton basically established is that the gravitational force between two bodies is directly proportional to the masses of that body, that means if there are two bodies M1 and M2, then the force would be directly proportional to M1 and M2 both, but it would be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two. And eventually, what we end up with is the gravitational force is directly connected to M1, M2 divided by the square of difference between these two. And if you remove this proportionality sign, you get gravitational constant. And this gravitational constant was eventually calculated by Henry Cavendish, who gave it a value of 6.673 into 10 to the power of minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. 
right that is the value of g now using this value we can calculate the the gravitational force or acceleration due to gravity of earth as well right so no need to get into numericals connected to this from exam perspective but simply if i have to calculate the gravitational constant what do i do i i use the gravitational force into multiplied by the distance between the two bodies and m1 m2 between the two masses by using that henry cavendish calculated that now this concept is very important the universal of law of gravitation it explains so many things it explains how the gravity works or why on earth everything is connected to it i'm standing on earth right now why because of action of gravity if i am at this location if i throw a ball if i leave a ball in which direction the ball will go towards the center of the earth if i'm standing here if i drop the ball it will again act towards center of the earth if i'm standing here or if this is a flight and this flight is continuously attracted by the gravitational force of earth in which direction towards the center that means always centripetal force acting towards the center center of that particular body so law of gravitation it explains why all of us are binded to this earth it also explains why moon is moving around the earth why planets why earth why mars why jupiter they are revolving around the sun because of the same concept of gravity gravitational force or force of attraction between these two bodies and it is quite measurable when m1 m2 are high please try to understand because universal law of gravitation it states that every body attracts another body with some sort of force but as soon as mass 1 mass 2 would be very very small the value of this gravitational constant is of the tune of 10 to the power of minus 11 that means that force would would not be registered if the bodies are extremely small that force can be registered or can be felt if the bodies are very big with huge masses for example the gravitational pull of sun is higher than any other planet gravitational pull of Gr jupiter would be higher than that of earth because the mass of jupiter is higher than earth so that's the basic understanding apart from that we also understand a lot of concepts from gravity for example why do we get tides what is the reason for high tides what is the reason for low tides what are spring tides neap tides all these things would be understood by using the concept of gravity itself so let's talk about some of the important concepts connected to gravity i hope by now you have understood the universal law of gravitation let me summarize every object attracts another object with a force called as gravitational force it depends on the masses of the two bodies and the distance between them and of course the gravitational constant which has a very small value of the order of 10 to the power of minus 11 now let's talk about some of the ideas connected with gravitation first thing is acceleration due to gravity now acceleration due to gravity what is this now we all know acceleration due to gravity if i drop something from a height towards the earth surface it accelerates continuously this we have already established it accelerates every second with a speed of 9.8 meter per second continuously meaning at one at time second at time 1 second it will be 9.8 meter per second at time 2 2 seconds it it is going to be double of this particular value now how did we arrive at this particular value again it comes from the laws of motion newton second law of motion it clearly states that mass into acceleration is equal to force now when i say i drop a body i drop this particular apple from some height now the mass of this particular apple imagine it to be m now what is the force that is acting force is equal to mass into acceleration from that height it would be mg now this force is equated to the gravitational force now when i do this i get the value of g i get the value of g because the the weight or mass of this particular apple is very very small i end up with the value of 9.8 meter per second square this is acceleration due to gravity and if i drop anything from some height then it continuously accelerates till reaching or uh, reaching till the uh, surface right so acceleration of gravity can be understood 
and we get the value of g to be this. This is the gravitation, acceleration due to gravity on earth. But acceleration to gravity on other planets can be different because it ultimately depends on this particular mass. Meaning, the higher the mass of the celestial body, the larger would be the acceleration due to gravity on that particular celestial body. Now, this concept of G has also led us to understanding of loss of motion for a body which is falling. Now, we have already established the equations of motion v is equal to u plus a t v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s s is equal to u t plus half a t square and these change appropriately for a falling body wherever we have a you will get it as acceleration due to gravity g and wherever you have s that is distance now it becomes height so v is equal to u plus a t transforms to v is equal to u plus g t please remember g t S is equal to ut plus half at square. It transforms to h because now we are not talking about distance. Again, distance in terms of height. h is equal to ut plus half gt square. Similarly, v square, the square of final velocity is equal to square of initial velocity plus 2gh. So, accordingly, the loss of motion also change for a falling body. Another concept which is very important for us to understand is the difference between mass and weight. Now, mass, mass, it depends on the matter. It depends on the matter. But weight of any body, it depends on the force that is exerted on that mass by gravity. So, please remember, mass is basically depending on the matter. It never changes. For instance, if, uh, if my my mass, if my mass is say 72 kg, my mass is 72 kg, it will remain 72 kg at all the places, be it earth, be it moon, be it anywhere. But my weight would be different depending on the acceleration due to gravity. Here is a classic example. Say, imagine there is a body, there is a body which has a mass of 50 kg, 50 kg or 50 kg approximately translates to 110 pound, right? How much does it weight becomes? Weight is a concept which is connected to gravity, right? Gravity. So, a mass of 50 kg, basically, a mass of 50 kg, it equates to 490 Newton weight. So, uh, the unit of weight is Newton, all right? Similarly, as I told you, it depends on the gravity. And if we calculate the weight of an object on moon to weight of an object on earth, the value translates to 1 is to 6. That means if a body has a weight of 1, if a body has a weight of 1 Newton on moon, the same on earth would be 6 Newton on earth. So, what have we established? Mass is the meaning of that matter. Mass is composed of protons, neutrons, atoms, basically whatever the matter is made up of. It never changes. Please remember it never changes with the location. Mass of an object is always constant. It can never be zero, but weight of an object can be zero depending on the gravity. If gravity is zero, it can be zero. So, mass of an object never varies with the location, but weight of an object, it varies with the gravity. With the gravity. Remember this. How do we measure our mass? By a balance. How do we measure the weight? By a spring balance. The unit is different. This is kg and this is in newtons. All right. Right. Now, apart from this, as I told you, the concept of weight, it depends on the gravity. And if my weight on earth is x, my weight on moon would be one sixth of that x. Why? Because the acceleration due to gravity of moon is less. So, you can see wherever earth's, earth's value we know, 9.81 meter per second square. Now, this is acceleration due to gravity on earth. But if we go to other planets, say for instance Mercury, its acceleration due to gravity is lower. Venus is more or less, more or less similar. But if you look at Moon, it is one sixth of the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Similarly, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, they have higher acceleration due to gravity owing to their higher mass. So this is a comparative chart of how much would be the weight on different planets. For instance. If 
द वेट ऑफ वन पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट ऑन अर्थ इज से हंड्रेड न्यूटन देन ऑन सन बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स ग्रेविटी हाइपोथेटिकली इट्स वैल्यू वुड बी टू सेवन जीरो सेवन न्यूटन सिमिलरली इट वुड बी लेसर देन अर्थ on mercury lesser than earth on venus lesser than earth on mars so please remember these three bodies are smaller than earth in comparison in terms of the mass of the celestial bodies but as soon as you reach jupiter saturn uranus there there uh, if you see for jupiter it is 234 newtons for saturn it is 106 newton all right so Uh, please try to understand almost similar kind of acceleration due to gravity is seen on uranus uh, as well as venus very close to 9 the value i hope it's clear the difference between mass and weight weight depends on location weight depends on gravity all right apart from this the gravitation can also explain the concept of tide now if you live in coastal areas you will see that your parents must have told you or people told you whenever there is high tide do not venture into the seas why because the tides would be very high but why do we see this in a day in a day we see high tides and we see low tides now why these tides occur these tides occur because of gravitational interaction between earth moon and sun majorly because of moon's gravitational pull as i told you two bodies if one body attracts another body with some sort of gravitational force that means earth attracts the moon with some sort of gravitational pull moon also attracts the earth with some sort of gravitational pull and because of this we see tides for instance whenever because of the location of location of moon we see that in a day in a day coastal areas experience two low tides and two high tides every approximately 24 hours that is depending on the location of the moon on the location of the moon and rotation of the earth we will see the moon attract the water and that is why you get a tidal bulge which is called as high tide and at this location you will also have a high tide region on the opposite side why because the tidal bulge here is less due to gravity than the center of the earth so in a day you you get two instances of high tides and two instances of low tides in 24 hours apart from this because of interaction of gravity between moon and sun we also have a concept of spring tides and neap tides whenever we get earth moon and sun in a same line we get spring tides spring tides right or moon can be on this side because you do know moon it revolves around the earth so whenever moon is in straight line with sun you get you get spring tide but as soon as the moon earth and sun they come in some sort of perpendicular projection for instance moon is somewhere here earth is here and sun it's always here you do know that because sun is stationary sun is fixed and these things revolve around the sun so if if a projection is something like this then you will get neap tides all right so spring tides neap tides high tides low tides these are all concepts connected to your to your gravity interaction of gravitational force between earth moon and sun so tides can also be explained using concept of gravity apart from this there is one more very interesting concept of buoyant force the force of buoyancy which can be explained using the concept of gravity now we have also we have already established the concept of pressure in our previous discussion we have seen pressure what is the meaning of pressure pressure is the perpendicular force that is acting on one particular area and this perpendicular force we call it as thrust you know thrust is a force that is exerted on a body on a surface perpendicularly for instance for instance i'm standing right now on the ground that means thrust is being acted upon on the ground on the soil because the force is acting perpendicularly and what would be the pressure what is the, what is the pressure that i'm exerting right now on the on the land on the soil that is perpendicular force thrust it is measured in newtons so thrust divided by unit area that gives you pressure and pressure is calculated as in pascal that you know 
that is why you must have seen for instance for instance say i'm standing right now on the land imagine i am i am now in a desert so when i stand in desert probably my feet are going to enter into the soil probably half a feet one feet into the soil why because the pressure that is being exerted on sand is more right that's why you will see that your feet will enter inside now similarly similarly what happens is now i i lie flat on sand what is going to happen nothing i do not i do not i do not go inside the soil right right why because now the area is more now the area is more that's why the pressure is less so i hope you get the concept of thrust pressure area we have discussed this before also pressure is equal to thrust by area now why we discuss this why are we discussing this because pressure is not just exerted by solids we have already established in our previous interactions that pressure is exerted by liquids as well as gases we have seen this that liquid exerts pressure classic example being this right you take a water bottle then you put a balloon here you will see because of the pressure of this liquid you will see water entering this or if you simply put two holes into this bottle you will see the water is going to it, it is exerting pressure and because of this pressure you will see the loss of water in fact it exerts equal pressure in all the direction and this pressure it it depends on the height of the liquid or height of the uh, the fluid right we have established this now based on this concept itself we are going to understand another idea of buoyancy you must have felt this right you must have felt whenever you enter a swimming pool you will feel light you will feel light why do you feel light no see my mass is 72 kg weight would be appro approximately say uh, if i multiply it by 9.8 let me just round it up to 10 meter per second square i would be getting somewhere around 700 705 right 705 newton so my mass is 72 kg my weight would be 705 newtons but as soon as i enter into water i'll feel much lighter now if i have a spring balance you will see that my weight would have reduced my weight would have reduced from 705 newtons approximately 700 newtons it would have reduced but why why because whenever a solid body whenever a solid body is left in the liquid or in the fluid there is always a buoyant force which is acting in the opposite direction that is why you will feel a little lighter and that's why you must have feel you must have seen some things float on the some things float on the fluid some things sink in why because this buoyant force may not be enough for instance if i take a simple beaker and first i drop a pin now this pin is made up of iron now this is water imagine this is water so what happens what happens is the pin it is going to sink in why the amount of buoyant force that is acting on this pin and the amount of thrust or the pressure that the pin is applying it is more than that that's why it is going to sink in now you must be already thinking sir then what happens to ship what happens to other things which float we'll talk about that in some time but you will see the same kind if a wooden cork is taken and if it is if it is thrown in water it is going to float it is going to float why because there are two things which are working first one is the weight of this let me just erase this a little you will see that first force is the weight of this particular cord which is already acting but a liquid or fluid is also exerting some sort of buoyant force or the force of buoyancy it is already acting on this and you will see that more than this weight the buoyant force is there and that is why it is floating that's why some things float on water some things sink and this buoyant force it depends on the density of the fluid it depends on the density of the fluid clear so gravity is working on this this is the mass of the object so weight of the object would be m into g so this m into g if if it is higher than the buoyant force that is See, let me just denote it as fb if mg is greater than fb this is going to sink if fb is greater than it is going to float and this fb 
it depends on certain things it depends mainly on the gravity of the fluid so based on this itself archimedes principle has been found out archimedes archimedes he came up with this concept of displacement of that particular fluid and that that gives you the buoyant force now he said if i take a object if i take a object if i immerse that in a liquid he realized that as soon as i immerse it first of all the water level in this beaker it goes up meaning meaning the it has accommodated that particular object so he said buoyant force can be calculated how simply by using a weight if i immerse some weight in the water this water is going to be displaced that means the water column is going to rise and once i calculate how much water has been displaced that would be the buoyant force which is acting on that mass or object so buoyant force it basically depends on three things that is it, its formula is rho v g basically that is volume of the displaced fluid based on archimedes principle how much volume is displaced apart from that density of the fluid and the magnitude of the gravity so buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid into the volume that has been displaced on the basis of archimedes principle into the acceleration due to gravity and there is a very interesting story behind this archimedes principle archimedes a greek scientist one day he was he was taking bath in a tub and as soon as he entered into the tub he was working on this for a very long time and as soon as he entered into the tub he saw that the water from the tub it fell out then he mentioned eureka that means that means he got that idea it dawned on him that the amount of force or, or the amount of weight that i'm putting in same similar kind of water is being displaced and that this water displacement can be taken as a reference and i can calculate how much is the buoyant force from the fluid and using this particular principle he uh, later on found out the purity of the golden crown of the king so archimedes principle is a very interesting principle based on which we have developed so many ideas i told you that if, it is, if if an iron nail is simply thrown is simply thrown in water it is going to sink in but a huge ship why it does not sink because if i design it in such a way if i design it in such a way so that the volume of the water displaced is minimum then i can ensure that the buoyant force be more and more right i can see this um, if, if the volume is higher because it ultimately depends on rho and volume and g so i ensure that i create such a design i create such a design that it it basically displaces maximum amount of volume that means the buoyant force is more and more and i can see a ship floating similarly you will see that i can create a submarine which sinks inside and submarine's design is such that the, there is low buoyant force which is acting on it similarly we have designed hot air balloons uh, we have uh, designed hydrometers even the lactometers which check the purity of the sample of milk they are found out on the basis of archimedes principle itself so archimedes just while taking bath it was an accidental discovery he just went into the tub water fell out he said eureka and it is said that he 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 was so ecstatic people thought he was mad he started to run he started to run as he said eureka and he started to show he started to run out and people thought what is going on but he had found out a very important principle connected to buoyant force which changed the trajectory of history itself today we work on the same principle all right so all these things are connected to gravity itself everybody thinks that gravitation is about simply earth attracting things no gravitation is a much bigger concept universal law of gravitation it states that every object it attracts another object whatever however small it is it attracts another object but the the force of attraction is not considerable that is why when we look at the physics model you will see gravitational force is one of the weakest forces all right right so that's the completion of gravitation discussion i hope you have gotten good ideas from this chapter. 
in our subsequent discussion, we will move to the next chapter. Thank you for watching this. And if you like this video, you can always follow me on this particular ID at the rich Rahul Sai Tutu. Thank you for watching this again. Jai Hind.